Well, now we must turn our attention to five more finals, all of them non-Olympic, but nonetheless all very important to those who've made it through to the final. The first of those competitions will be for the lightweight women's pairs. This is the lineup, and this is a straight final, for there were only six entries. And consequently, the draw made at random, and it sees the two most successful nations drawn on the far side. The United States, Suzanne Walter and Michelle Whitcomb, they represent the United States who were winners of this title in 1999. The defending champions are Great Britain. This year, Sarah Birch and Joe Nitsch are on duty. Last year, Melinda Myers and Miriam Taylor were the two who won the title in Zagreb. Then Zimbabwe, with Jill Lancaster in the bow with Georgina Simpson. Jill was in the Zimbabwe boat that took the bronze medal in 1999 in St. Catharines. Argentina, Patricia Conte and Elena Urbano. They were in action in 1998 and took the silver medal. Mind you, only four crews competed on that particular occasion. South Africa in lane five, Elizabeth Ann Sparg and Tanya Armstrong. And then to their left, Romania in lane number six, Alina Skortu and Liliana Nija. And the last time that Romania made an impression in this particular category, 1996, when they were the bronze medalists. So the lightweight women's pairs first introduced in 1995. And maybe a question I can pass to you, Dan. Is this one of the categories that could be sac sacrificed to bring the number of competition categories down to a more manageable number? It could be, but it's interesting to see that it is a, a, a good full lineup here, even though it's a straight final. It's a pretty competitive lineup. We've seen it badly uh, represented in the past with only th uh, four entries. But this is, this is better, and it's competitive, and this is a good training ground for people coming on from uh, smaller countries. It's uh, the uh, FISA's plan for universality, where they're trying to spread the, uh, the, the gospel of rowing around the world and getting smaller nations uh, to take part. But to counter that argument, Dan, as the Americans on the far side take the early lead, there are other lightweight categories like the lightweight uh, women's double skulls that they could be going for because really 24 categories is in a way a huge menu to manage these days. Well, it's certainly true, and uh, there's also the possibility of introducing sprint racing uh, into a program, a world championship program, which would add a certain amount of, of uh, pizzazz to a, a world championships. But certainly the United States now, who've got half a length, about a quarter of a length on Great Britain, these are the two uh, nations that tend to control this event. Uh, and uh, the British pair settling into a pretty good rhythm there, sitting not as well back as you would expect. You'd sit them. You'd expect to see them sitting back well on the finishes, but uh, stroke there, leaning forward. Journey each leading quite a, quite quite a long way forward as she finishes the stroke. So Great Britain, who've really been the dominant force in recent times, the United States three times winners in the 90s have the lead though and then uh, of course the bronze medal here could be really interesting Zimbabwe Argentina South Africa and Romania pick one of those from uh, the remaining four well new to rowing uh, that universality um, program Zimbabwe Argentina and South Africa all emerging nations in the sport Romania obviously one of the great uh, success stories of um, uh, women's rowing so the British sitting on the shoulders of the Americans. And the one crew that's getting detached, Romania, we might uh, see that in a moment. But on the far side, there it is, America by almost half a length ahead of Great Britain. Then Zimbabwe, Argentina, South Africa, and here are poor old Romania. And that's uh, a really difficult position to be in, Dan. Yeah, it's not nice being out in lane six, but uh, they're, they're at a very low rating. You can see how steady they are coming forward. Uh, they seem a little bit uh, inexperienced in this kind of a field. Uh, and you don't normally expect the uh, Romanians to be that far back. They're usually very competitive. So perhaps bringing on some new young under-23 uh, athletes. 
But Argentina very competitive, taking a look across there. Very aggressive, very tough leg drive there as they drive off the foot stretcher. Well, two fights going on, so to speak. One for gold and silver, the other really for bronze as we come towards the half distance. And still America in the lead. But Joe Nitsch, 32 from Wiltshire, but does most of a rowing out of Henley these days. And Sarah Birch from Shepparton, very close to the Americans. And the next 500, 750 metres is going to tell all, I think. It's uh, just a question of if the British now can move up on the Americans and really push them. It's very difficult for them here because uh, there's been no heats, no semi-finals, no repechages. There's been nothing for them to judge. So all of this is completely new. They have no idea what their competitors are like. And now Great Britain making a charge, making a push on the United States. United States trying to hold them off. Uh, experience in the in the in the British in the British crew they know they've been here before they've their medalists before in different boats uh, and that's that experience that is seeing them now move past the United States very cool very sure of themselves good racing yeah they haven't quite got past the Americans but you sense that it might not be too long the Americans on the far side Michelle Whitcomb Borkus well she's had a fair share of problems she's in the stroke seat had a really nasty bike crash which uh, ended up in her breaking her pelvis and her partner that's Suzanne Walter well she's also had her fair share of medical problems she was a gymnast originally but then had some really difficult knee problems and switched to rowing but those two now coming under real pressure from the British meanwhile it's the Argentinians still holding off Zimbabwe for bronze Yes, the United States had a little bit of a, a push there. They moved back away again from the, from the British pair. Um, it seemed as if Britain was about to go by, but they, the Americans responded very, very well, and they pushed back out again to about half a canvas. So can Great Britain ask the question a second time and get the desired result? Last 500 metres coming up now in this women's lightweight pairs. Not very much to choose between America on the far side or Great Britain. And not too much actually between Argentina and Zimbabwe for the bronze medal. So two duels and who is going to win? each of them. America there on the far side. Now the British again having another go here, Dan. Yeah, and Argentina coming too, nearest the camera. Argentina only half a length down on the British, uh, on, the, on the two British and American leaders, uh, pushing up very, very well. Could Argentina get back on top here? It's uh, Great Britain now just moving past United States. Maybe this is the one that they can actually do. Will this experience show? Zimbabwe coming very strongly as well. Zimbabwe trying to get back on terms with Argentina. Yes, this is really good, but this is the push now that Joe Nitsch and Sarah Birch have got to make count. They've got to really go through with this and try and dominate the American pair and really destroy them mentally as well as physically. They've got to really send a message to the Americans that they've got no hope through into the last couple of hundred metres now. And look at Zimbabwe take on Argentina. And Zimbabwe move into the bronze medal position just, I would say, as Great Britain eke out another precious few centimetres we're into the front of the enclosures now. America on the far side, Great Britain, and they are going away, Great Britain. And Joe Nitsch and Sarah Birch, I believe, have got the better of the two Americans on the far side. And here you can see locked together on the left there, Argentina in the foreground, just beyond them, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe just about in third place, but Great Britain going for the line now. And this looks to be the first gold medal coming up for the British women's squad after what has been a disappointing regatta. But they're just about going to get there. Joe Nitsch and Sarah Birch get there. Meanwhile, look at Argentina coming back on Zimbabwe. And America gets second, and Argentina have fought back to take the bronze medal well that was some fantastic racing there the British pair were up to 44 strokes a minute they absolutely tore into that and uh, we're saying earlier on that maybe this is a, an event that should get dropped well I think uh, the, the girls out here today have shown that it is an event worth considering worth keeping in the program that was great great racing and did a credit to all of them
Just have a look at the finish for the bronze medal. Now, at the bottom of your picture there, that's Argentina. Zimbabwe definitely had the, the bronze medal for some metres, but Argentina, all credit there to Patricia Conte and Elena Obano. They fought back. There they are to take the bronze. And do they know it? They will soon. <laughs> So Great Britain, strongest at the business end of the race, won 49.52 for the last quarter, over two and a half seconds quicker than the Americans. Well, some really courageous racing from Great Britain there in that last uh, 500 metres. Morris Hayes, their coach, very, very pleased with that. Really good reception for these two young women who arguably are the one ray of sunshine at this regatta for the British Joe women's Beach. squad. Two Americans, Suzanne Walter and Michelle whitcomb -Borkus. just Michelle couldn't match the determination of the two British women in that last quarter of the race. Patricia Conte. And once again, back on the medal podium for Patricia Conte and her partner, Elena Urbano. Elena 98, Urbano. it was a silver medal. Today, though, a very hard-fought bronze.